different type of, you know, people try to box you in sometimes, and it's like, you know, and sometimes you believe in that box, so I had to trust that I could do it, and then you trusted me enough to do it, um, so I didn't want to let you down, so it was really about us really having a great relationship where I felt comfortable enough to go there and just leave it all there and not worry about it, and, um, and I think it worked. You know, sometimes, you know, when you do something that you're out of your comfort zone, you just got to go for it. But there was a magic time that, that happened. It was on set. I don't know if you remember this, but, like, it's intimidating work for Garcelle because you grow up with someone that's older. And you're, you, I'm young. You know, I'm a young filmmaker here. So she's, you what know, are you just kind of... What are you trying to say? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I mean, experience. I know, experience. I know. Experience. I know. You've been in this business know. forever. Um, I've got a question for you on the spot. But you've been... Yeah. Just think about it. I'm, I'm a young... You can, mm -hmm. I, I actors won't tr like a lot of actors right. will not trust the new director, especially with all these scenes. Sure. Like I'm gonna be sitting there and I'm gonna have my legs open, you know, while a guy, guy's doing something. Like that's. Mm -hmm. So she had to trust me, and that was one of my things where I was like, royalties on set. Like everyone did, Garcelle, every, Megan, everyone had a respect towards Garcelle. And I figured our first day came in, flew in, I checked in the dressing room, and we were chilling. And then we were in, the, <laughs> we were doing the scene, and she was like doing it and. Because we all thought the role should be like, you know, really like a certain way. We all had that perception. And then so we were doing it, and then we just went in. I went in the chairlift. She was in there rehearsing, like pacing, and I just went in. And I was like, I was like, hey. She's like, this is me and her. She's like, what's up? She's like, yeah, I'm getting the character. I was like, oh, so are you Caribbean, right? She's like, yeah, I'm, like, I'm Caribbean too. She's like, oh, okay. I was like, yeah, you speak Patois, you speak French? She's like, yeah. And I was like, okay, I think we're going to. And then she was like, started speaking, and then it was like, and then it, I they saw clicked. her yeah. morph into it, yeah. and then on set, people would be like, when she started talking, I'd be like, damn. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, every, it made it turn like a, because yeah, no one knew it was, it was coming. Was great, so to see, great see her more, trust me, being like, yo, okay, young filmmaker, I'm I'm doing, because honestly, I, I really felt blessed to have her, to see her morph and just, it's just she became this Lisa character, and, it, and that's really the amazing thing about the process of making a film is that when you have that trust with each other and respect and, and, respect. and so she just came and just was amazing and at the evening she'd be like Harry you know? yeah. <laughs> I'll be in the hotel and we'll walk by in the lobby she's like <laughs> no it was great because like I said so many times people box you in and I, I I'm grateful that you gave me the opportunity and I'm a huge fan of her now because now you know I, I always think about how I can inspired to stretch her in so many different ways because she's so talented but you're right when you're gorgeous you're a woman you, that's all people say and I go to meetings and people see her performance and like I never would imagine Garcelle and I'm like yeah she, she, she did her thing so it's amazing how like people really right. view like in this industry people love to identify you push you there and keep you there but like this film she's won the Oscar in Africa like mm -hmm. we won a lot yeah she's, it's been crazy she's, she's, <laughs> this movie is really um People are fascinated by porn. I'm fascinated by porn. I trusted you, so thank you for that. Thank you. Thank you for yeah. that. Yeah. Very nice. Oh. So the movie was, it was very loaded. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we had, you know, there was the single mom, there was the rape, the loss of virginity, the drinking, the rage. I mean, it was like every scene was a little movie in itself. It was, it was, it was really, really amazing, and, and, and just, I felt like I was, I, I felt like I was back in my high school days, like, easily, like, I had seen a lot of those things in my own personal life, <coughs> what, what message did each one of you want the audience to walk away with, what was, what, what, when you were in those roles, what mm -hmm. did you want people to feel, to see, to understand about this young woman's life? Well, I'm going to say, for me, the character was so flawed, and it was real. Like, you know people like that. You know parents that are irresponsible like that. But what I loved about it is that even though it was Grace's journey, it was also the mom's journey. Because mm -hmm. yeah. at the end, she realized that she wasn't there for her daughter, and she wasn't there for herself. She wasn't, you know, she didn't have any self-respect for herself. So for me, I really wanted... The audience to connect with the flawness of her because we're all flawed mm -hmm. but then having the strength to realize that she messed up and now she needs to step up 
not only for her daughter, but also for herself. So that was my, what was my take on it. Of me? Um, when I, when, when writing uh, A Girl Like Grace, um, it, it just really was a story of, people needed something to relate to. This generation needed something to <coughs> film that they could relate to. Um, you know, past generations, you had things like kids, you had things like 13. Especially um, girls of color needed a film that they saw themselves in, the situations that they could relate to, and, see, and, and a film that they could say, um, "Wow, this character made it out. I can, I can do okay." You know, regardless of the bad family home, regardless of the things that happened at school, regardless of whatever situation that you know things are okay. And that, so when I wrote it, um, that's what I, that's what I wanted to portray. You know, and that we can go through these changes and, and accept them, and they're okay. That's it. Everything's going to be all right. Everything's going to be all right. right. <laughs> yeah. My answer is a little cheesy, but I think this is where <laughs> I'm at in my life. is about patience. Like, patience with yourself. Because this movie was very patient. And, and I grew looking at it now, and you think about how much time and effort you put into something. And then you reflect that into your life. We all put so much time and effort into our lives. And so I had to be responsible with this film when I was, when you, you're getting so much thrown at you. And then that was the film. Grace had to be patient with herself. Um, I had a friend, the, when we decided to do the suicide turn, I had a friend that committed suicide that was very wealthy and an actor, one of my best friends in this industry. And we did our first TV show together. And when he committed suicide, it really, that's when I added that layer to it. Um, not that we were two little girls kissing on a bed, but we were best friends, like we were brothers, and we encouraged each other. And I think that sometimes when you believe in people like that, you know what I'm saying, and they don't believe in themselves, it kind of has you reflect on your life. So ever since that happened, I have to think about the industry, where I'm at in my career, how much money, because he had all that. Right. And I think sometimes you're not patient with yourself to understand what's tr what's truly what truly makes you happy, what is joy. And a lot of times it's not the things that we think they are. It's not a money, it's not status, it's not fame. It's really just being patient with work. I'm angry right now, so let me be angry, let me get a time out, let me process it, but I'm going to get over this. And I think that that's what life is. So Grace had a patient journey, and she has a lot of resentment and anger, but she has to move on in life. And I think that's what we have to do, you know what I'm saying? Like when we, when we go through life, we have to do that. Be patient with ourselves. Thank you, everybody. Thank you guys for coming out. Thank you so much.